why conservatives want government to fail. Right? They, this is what this is what we are seeing just writ large. I mean, just huge all over the place. Um, the writing, the news, the the, the right wing news like you know sites or the newsletter that documents the right-wing websites and news uh, from the New York Post. Don't buy the latest climate change and alarmism. Well, you know, it's, it is taking down governments, right? Cl climate change took down the government of Tunisia, took down the almost took down the government of Syria, took down the government of Libya, uh, changed the government in Egypt. It's, it's uh, you know, wrecking the governments in, in Central America. The Wall Street Journal, a climate of catastrophe. They, they're all pushing back on the IPCC report. And then, of course, the vaccine. Oh, let's let's make sure that you know America still has a dysfunctional, you know that 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 our hospitals are just jammed with people that they can't even deal with. And so here, over at World Net Daily, welcome to 1938. First, they came for the unvaccinated. Right. Or it's all Joe Biden's fault. The American thinker. America is suffering from Biden's COVID recklessness at the border. But there's a there's an actual reason why conservatives want government to fail everywhere. It's what I'm, I'm writing about in my piece today of the same title over at HartmanReport.com. There was this new study that just came out from the Peace Research Institute in Norway and the University of Aarhus. They polled 6,000 adults in the United States, Denmark, Italy, and Hungary, and they found that right across the board in these democratic nations, now Hungary is kind of the outlier here, but nonetheless, what they found was that the COVID pandemic has further eroded people's faith in democracy. Back in the 1960s, Pew has been doing these studies. The Pew, uh, Pew uh, there's a whole bunch of different Pew. This is a Pew Research Center. Uh, they have been doing these studies since 1953. And what they found was back in the 60s, 80 plus percent of Americans said that they trusted government to do the right thing most of the time. The percentage today is 17%. How did that happen? How is it that we went from trusting our government to not trusting our government in, in you know, 50 years? Well, it turns out there's an actual story here. Back in 1961, Rachel Carson published a book called Silent Spring about the, the death of birds as a result of the use of insecticides. And Ralph Nader, in 1965, published a book called Unsafe at Any Speed, talking about how, you know, the big automakers knew that their cars were designed in ways that would kill people. The steering wheels would go right through your chest. This could be fixed. The uh, seat belts were not mandatory. Seat belts would save lives, all this kind of stuff. And they were fighting against seat belts. And in response to this, Lewis Powell, in 1971, wrote this infamous memo saying that business and very wealthy individuals needed to mobilize to stop this so-called assault on American business. In his memo, Lewis Powell said, and I quote, perhaps the single most effective antagonist of American business is Ralph Nader, who thanks largely to the media has become a legend in his own time and an idol of middle millions of Americans. And then he goes on to quote this article from Forbes magazine about Ralph Nader, quote, the passion that rules in him, and he is a passionate man, is aimed at smashing utterly the target of his hatred, which is corporate power. He thinks and says quite bluntly that a great many corporate executives belong in prison for defrauding the consumer with shoddy merchandise, poisoning the food supply with chemical additives, and willfully manufacturing unsafe products that maim or kill the buyer. He emphasizes, and this is where Forbes got really freaked out, he emphasizes that he is not just talking about fly-by-night hucksters, but the top management of blue-chip businesses. Lewis Powell then in the next paragraph says, this is a frontal assault on our government, our system of justice, and the free enterprise system. And his solution? Big corporations and morbidly rich people need to fund a series of public policy think tanks they need to create a filtering organization to help stack the courts with conservatives. They need to create right-wing media empires, particularly in news, in television, in radio, and uh, in, in print. And they need to place business-friendly professors in colleges and universities all across the country. Lewis Powell then, the year after he wrote that memo, was put on the Supreme Court, and six years, seven years later, on the Supreme Court, 1968, uh, 60. Oh, which year was that? 1978, that's right. Um, in the first National Bank versus Bilotti case, he actually wrote the decision 
legalizing political bribery by corporations. Lewis Powell himself. And, you know, the, the core of this entire thing was if Americans trust government, then government will regulate us billionaires and us big toxic poison producing corporations. And we can't have that because that means our taxes go up and the regulations mean our profits go down. So we've got to destroy Americans' faith in government. Cue Ronald Reagan. The nine most frightening words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Remember that? That was 1978. Excuse me, 76. And of course, in, uh, excuse me, 86. Boy, what a day for years. Um, in any case, that was 1986. He, and in 1981, January 20th of 1981, when Reagan was sworn in, you know, he came right out and said it. He said, government is not the solution to your problems. Government is the problem. And now we have been subject to 50 years of this, well, 40 years of it in a big way, of being told that government is the problem, you can't trust government, government bureaucrats can't do anything right. Reagan's, you know, favorite, one of his favorite sayings, I've heard it re literally a thousand times repeated since, since Reagan said it from other people, is, you know, there are no good people in government. If there were smart people working for the government, they would leave the government and take a higher paid job in private industry. There's no good people. I mean, this is, you know, the, the, just ridiculing the idea of public service, ridiculing the idea that some people go into government work because they actually want to serve the rest of us, that they want to be of use to society and of value to society. The scientists that work at the Environmental Protection Agency or the Interior Department, that they're only, you know, the, the conservatives would have you believe that they're only there because they're, they're dumb or they're incompetent, which is absolutely not the case. Some of the best scientists in the world work at the National Institutes of Health and the Centers for Disease Control, for example. Government jobs. But 40 years of this mantra has led us now to the point where we've got the governors of Florida and Texas saying, government is so terrible, we're not going to let local governments protect your children from a deadly virus. This is where this is like the, the, the logical end point of this insane ideology. And now we've got an election coming up in 2022. And the billionaires and the transnational corporations are, are organizing their anti-democracy movements all over the world, and in particular here in the United States. And the question is whether Joe Biden and the Democrats in Congress can make it through. Right, they just passed this three and a half trillion dollar uh, uh, re reconciliation bill. Oh, they didn't pass the bill. They passed the 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 uh, the naked framework for the bill out of the Senate. So that goes to the House. They do the same thing, and then they start filling in the blanks. Right, and Joe Manchin comes out and goes, "Oh, we can't have this. Too much money, inflation." But that's okay. I, you know, Greg Sargent has a great piece in the Washington Post today, and I think he's absolutely right. Manchin has to give and cinema on the three and a half trillion dollar bill and vote for it if in exchange for that they want progressives in the House of Representatives and in the Senate for that matter to vote for their one trillion dollar uh, non-reconciliation bill that's got all kinds of Republican goodies jammed into it, like private-public partnerships, huge subsidies of for-profit corporations in the broadband industry, uh, you know, and 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 and, you know, and not taking on the fossil fuel industry, All right? So if you know, if you want your fossil fuel friendly, big corporate friendly bill, the one trillion dollar bill passed, Joe Manchin, you're going to have to suck it up with the three and a half trillion dollar bill. And 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 Bernie, if you want the three and a half trillion dollar bill, you're going to have to suck it up and go along with the one trillion dollar bill that Joe Manchin did. It's a reasonable kind of middle ground. But Republicans are trying to blow the whole thing up because they don't believe in government. Why? Because they are wholly owned by these billionaires and these polluting corporations that see government as something that reduces their profits. And they frankly don't give a damn about protecting Americans or the world. Meanwhile, in Michigan, a writer is over it. I'll tell you about that after the break. This 
is the Tom Hartman Program.